What is account-based marketing and how can you use it for your business? Well, in this video, you guys are going to find out. I'm Ben and welcome to Social Genie Digital. Okay, so to set the table for you guys, what is account-based marketing? Well, account-based marketing is a B2B marketing strategy in which best fit accounts or companies are targeted with a hyper-personalized strategy. Now, businesses are targeted which fit the ideal customer profile or buyer personas, you would call it, in a B2C business. And these accounts or companies are those businesses which are most likely to buy from your business. Now, you might be sitting there now and thinking, Ben, what is wrong with traditional lead generation marketing? Well, there is a lot of problems with lead generation marketing. So here's a couple of statistics for you. Over 80% of the visitors to a website are unlikely to be potential customers. That's according to a study by Demandbase. In 50% of marketing budgets is wasted on generating leads that companies don't contact. And over 60% of marketing and sales executives complain that inconsistent messaging has a negative impact on B2B customers. So this is where account-based marketing comes in. And basically the idea is to flip the funnel around. So rather than awareness, interest, and consideration, and then purchase, you have identified. So you start off identifying these target companies, these ideal accounts. Then you go to expand and you expand that partnership with them. You engage them across various different social channels and even at live events. And then they become advocates and actually tell other businesses in the industry. Okay, so what are the benefits of account-based marketing? Well, there are many benefits of account-based marketing, which have actually been proven by multiple studies. So according to a Gartner benchmark survey, those businesses which implemented an ABM strategy saw many benefits across both marketing and sales. So the marketing benefits included improved conversion rates, increased web traffic, improved advertising performance, and improved email metrics. While the sales benefits included faster sales cycles, higher win rates, and increased deal sizes. And this makes complete sense. Let's say there's a room full of 100 people, and you know only five people in that room are your ideal customer, most likely to buy, and actually qualified to buy. Then wouldn't it make more sense to actually target those five people, especially if you know their name and their contact details with relevant messaging rather than trying to market to the entire room? Okay, so what is the best account-based marketing strategy to use? Well, at Social Genie, I've actually personally studied all the different account-based marketing strategies across all the different businesses from what they use at leading consultancies like McKinsey and Bain to what they use at Adobe with their Marketo Engage platform. So a simple framework is called TEAM, which stands for Target, Engage, Activate and Measure. And this is by the B2B software called Terminus. Adobe Marketo uses a three-step process called identification, marketing and measurement. And at Social Genie Digital, I've actually personally developed our own four-step model, which I think actually takes the best of all the different strategies out there. And that is define, map, engage, and measure. So let's dive into that right now. Now, step number zero, this is a prerequisite for you guys, and that is to really ensure sales and marketing are aligned. Account-based marketing should not just be looked at as a marketing initiative. It should be looked at as a company-wide initiative and especially relevant to sales and marketing. And this is actually backed up by data. So according to a study by Bain, winning organizations maintain higher levels of cross-functional collaboration with 22% of sales teams having a marketing representative joining weekly pipeline review. So it is very important to have this close alignment between sales and marketing. Now, step number one is to define your ideal customer accounts. Now, remember, accounts are just target companies which you think are most likely to buy from your business. Now, the easiest way to find out this information is to actually analyze your current customers. Who are they? What is the industry? What is the market size? Why did they originally start working with your company? And why do they use your product or service? Now, in terms of more detailed technical terms, you could look at demographics, psychographics. So that's the motivations, the values, the purchase decisions, technographics. So what technology do they use? And does your B2B technology fit with their existing technology? 
stack life cycle so where are they in their life cycle as a business are they a startup are they a mature company do they have a lot of bureaucracy in their business or are they more open to new ideas now with social genie we like to say it's always good to be curious about your customers and that is essential especially when you're developing and defining these target accounts now step number two is to map these target accounts with your resources of course ideally with account-based marketing it would be great to have all your accounts with a one-to-one -one interaction but really that's just so resource intensive and it's just not possible for even large technology companies so you do have to really define what are your top accounts and where can you offer that one-to-one -one personalized experience for example with clients we use we highlight let's say the top 30 accounts and then we highlight the big five or the most important five of which we can have somebody one-to-one -one interacting with each of those single accounts. Or we can do what's called a one-to-many or a one-to-few where we have one person with, let's say, three accounts in a related industry or we have one person providing industry personalized content across, say, 10 to 15 different accounts. Now, again, we like to look at data. And according to Bain, 50% of winning companies target less than 100 accounts and have a more focused approach. So the more focused you can make your marketing strategy, the better. Now, another term for this is called spear phishing, where you're basically targeting your messages to the key decision makers and those members of the buying committee. Now, step number three is to develop hyper-personalized content and start to engage with these target accounts and nurture those relationships. Now, really the goal here is to provide immense value with every single interaction. So this is not about spamming. This is not about providing pointless content to them or pointless emails. It's really about identifying what their needs are in the business and actually providing really helpful and valuable content to them and of course it's all about defining the right message to the right person at the right time now at social genie we also like to say personalization equals profit because the more personalized you can make an interaction the higher conversion rates you will see and this is backed up also by a lot of data so according to a study here by hubspot personalized call to actions result in higher conversion and 73 percent of customers prefer personalized shopping experiences now, the next question you need to ask is where is the attention of your ideal customers? So you found these target accounts, you've mapped out their buying committee, how they make decisions and who are you trying to target? Now you need to find out where is their attention? And of course, the different members of the buying committee will be split across multiple different functions from sales to marketing to procurement to IT to software engineering. And of course, their attention will be on very different platforms. Now, generally, there are three channel types, and that includes owned, so that could be your own website or email list, borrowed, so that could be organic social media reach, and then paid, so paid advertising. Now, in terms of social media platforms, of course, LinkedIn is usually the best for B2B marketing. Blogs and websites, so you want to target blogs and websites relevant to that specific industry and that specific buyer persona. Google search ads, industry-specific YouTube channels, industry podcasts, industry events and trade shows. For example, for some of our finance clients, we often market them at Money 2020, which is one of the biggest fintech exhibitions. There's virtual events, which have started to become increasingly popular. You can also look at existing partnerships, communities, private clubs, and you can even invite these target accounts to dinners, to events, and really find out what is important to them. It could be a sporting team. It could be a big event. Invite them personally to there, of course, make it all VIP build that relationship with them, and really just helps to leave a good sentiment in their mind about your brand. So when they are coming to make a decision, it really can help to influence them and help them to move more towards your business than a competitor's business. And really the key to all this is to remember people are people. For example, for one of our B2B clients, we actually discovered that one of their target accounts and one of the members of the buying committee was actually a major fan of Ed Sheeran. And they really wanted to go to this concert, which had now sold out. And luckily through the personal connections I had, I managed to get these tickets and send it to them free of charge. And of course, invited along a couple of the B2B team to actually build that relationship 
with that target account. And that really resulted in them winning that target account, not directly from that, but it did influence it and then also helped with account expansion. And finally, step number four is to measure results and scale with technology. So of course, with any interaction you do, always be sure to measure results. For example, this could be using a platform such as Google Analytics if you're tracking website traffic, conversions, bounce rate, etc. Also, you need to be tracking, let's say, content which has been downloaded, content which has been binged by certain accounts, content which has been shared more. And for events, you could track the number of sales calls or sales meetings booked. You could track the number of demos signed up by target accounts. And there are many more different metrics which you can track. Now, in terms of technology, definitely as you start scaling, you will need certain technology. Now, you can cobble together lots of different pieces of technology. For example, with clients in the past, we've used a CRM or customer relationship management system to track all the contacts such as HubSpot or Salesforce. And then for the business data, we've used platforms such as Zoom Info, Crunchbase, craft and many many more now of course there are also all-in-one platforms you can use such as demand base which is one of the best out there terminus and even hubspot's account based marketing platform okay so that's account based marketing and how it can help your business and if you're sitting there now and you're thinking ben that sounds fantastic but i'd really like help with my marketing strategy or with my account based marketing strategy for my business well if that sounds like you feel free to reach out to us. I will link below with our contact details and also put our email below where you can contact us directly and we can set up a call with you to discuss your business needs, your business requirements and how we can help you and your business. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have an incredible day and I'll see you guys in our next video. Keep growing.